Greetings fellow travelers, today we will be trekking through San Diego Zoo's Elephant Odyssey. Here we will find modern day counterparts to animals that roamed Southern California between 1.8 million to 10,000 years ago. During that time period, Southern California was home to unique animals such as saber-toothed cats, lions, mammoths, horses, and camels. First up is a series of burrows that are connected to each other in the main exhibit area. This is home to Red Diamond, Southwestern Speckled, and Southern Pacific Rattlesnakes. This exhibit is designed to allow the reptiles to move back and forth between warm and cool areas as needed. Rattlesnakes resided in this region long before the mammoths. An advantage of being cold-blooded is the ability to adapt to climate and vegetation changes. Across from the rattlesnakes, we will find two of nature's cleanup crew. First up is the intelligent and resourceful raven. Ravens forage for a wide variety of plants and animals. They often follow larger predators and eat the leftovers of a kill. Similar past animals would be the prehistoric crow. Condors continued to spread their wings long after mammoths and saber-toothed cats vanished. In the 1980s, this bird nearly became extinct, and the San Diego Zoo joined with other organizations to save them. Next up, we'll find the living relatives of the extinct large-headed llama. This grazer's long legs made it well-suited for running across open plains. The shorter legs of its modern-day relatives, the llama and guanaco, are better adapted to maneuvering on steep mountain slopes. Llamas are members of the camel family and live in groups of up to 20. They have been domesticated for their wool, as well as used for hauling heavy loads. Llamas are alert and aggressive towards predators, making them good guardians for herds of sheep and goats. Guanacos are wild relatives of the llama. They are able to survive on what little water they get from the plants they eat. In the middle of the pathway, we come across three structures that teach us ways we can help save the environment. The red pole teaches us about how small changes in energy use can have a powerful effect. The green pole talks about everything old can be new again by reusing and recycling, which helps save landfill space. The blue pole is all about water conservation. Past this, we come across a multi-species yard housing dromedary camels and pronghorns. Here we find out the camels originated in North America. They migrated to Asia and Africa. The relative of these animals is the Western camel, and its scientific name means yesterday's camel. Some 12,000 years ago, herds of these animals roamed Southern California. The camels we see here, the dromedary camel, looks more like its extinct relative than other camel species. These animals can go a week or more without water and several months without food. They can survive a 40% body weight loss and take in up to 32 gallons of water in one drinking session. The ancient pronghorns roaming the plains of North America were almost exactly like the pronghorns we see today. They could run up to 40 miles per hour, using the speed to escape from the now extinct American cheetah and dire wolf. Habitat loss and unmanaged hunting caused a sharp drop in their numbers. However, conservation efforts have helped the pronghorn come back from the brink of extinction. This is the first of the elephant yards we will come across. We'll spot some of these animals down the path. Signs around this pond tell us about the dangers facing pond turtles, how extinction is a natural process but human actions are making it happen sooner. We also learn about a few of the species that have stuck around since the ancient time period, like the California toad and the Pacific pond turtle for example. Just through the kids theater we come across a series of exhibits housing insects where we learn that each of the more than 2 million insect species plays a vital role in its environment. The jade-headed buffalo beetle plays an important role in pollination, where they clumsily fly from tree to tree using two pairs of wings. Dead leaf mantises help keep garden pests under control, and the female spiny stick insect is adapted for producing eggs. Her wings are tiny and useless. The last exhibit is for sunburst diving beetles. Up the pathway, we come back to the elephants, and learn that herds of Colombian mammoths lived and grazed in Southern California. The larger than their living relatives, it is believed they behaved much the same way. And another of these species to roam California was the pygmy mammoth. These mini mammoths only existed in California. It is believed that Colombian mammoths swam from the mainland to a nearby island and stayed. Here their descendants became smaller over time because of limited food sources. 
resulting in this unique species. Both Asian and African elephants are similar to this ancient species. And again, we'll have more elephant viewing spots up the road. In this next aviary, we will spot both the secretary bird and the black-billed magpie. The secretary bird represents the extinct Daggett's eagle, or long-legged eagle. This predator was actually a hawk. Its behavior was similar to the secretary bird, hunting and feeding on reptiles, amphibians, and smaller mammals that could be swallowed whole. As for the secretary bird, its name means hunter bird. This long-legged bird hunts on foot, stalking small prey. Secretary birds are the tallest birds of prey and the most terrestrial. These African birds of prey look like cranes but act more like eagles. In fact, secretary birds are so unique, both in looks and how they capture prey, that they're in their own scientific family. Black-billed magpies can often be seen on the backs of deer and moose picking off ticks. Other times, these clever birds will flip over stones and search for grain and insects to eat. San Diego Zoo's elephant herd is made up of older non-breeding elephants. Showcasing how they care for these older animals helps other zoos care for their elephants. Three of the elephants that we will see are Mary, an Asian elephant born in 1964, and she is the undisputed matriarch of the herd. Shaba, born in 1980, is an African elephant, and Davi, an Asian elephant born in 1977. How does San Diego Zoo care for the older elephants? Keepers will till the ground to provide a soft surface for strolling. They also put up scavenger hunts by placing food and treats in different places throughout the exhibit, encouraging the elephants to exercise. Toys are also created for the animals to investigate. Through positive reinforcement training, a relationship of trust allows the staff to provide better care for the elephants. The work doesn't stop here at San Diego Zoo. They have also teamed up with Elephants Without Borders to study and save over 220,000 elephants that live in southern Africa. Elephants are threatened by poaching due to the sale of ivory on the black market. Roughly 450,000 African elephants and 50,000 Asian elephants are alive today. EWB has deployed GPS collars on dozens of elephants to help track their movements so we can learn more about them. Both San Diego Zoo and Elephants Without Borders are helping farmers keep elephants away from their crops by planting chili peppers around their fields. Elephants don't like to taste and smell and may leave the farm alone, helping to reduce the conflict between humans and elephants. Past elephant yards, we come across another multi-species habitat featuring capybara and bard's taper. Fossil remains discovered in 1995 of the North American capybara paints a picture that Southern California was a wetter environment during the Pleistocene. Capybaras are the largest rodent in the world today and are excellent swimmers. Always found near water, they can stay submerged for up to five minutes. The first tapers lived in North America. Today, barge tapers are found in Central and South America and Malayan tapers live in Southeast Asia. Tapers will use their flexible snouts to gather food. The snout is also a handy snorkel when they're submerged in water. Because they look so much like their extinct relatives, tapers are sometimes called living fossils. Loss of forest makes survival a struggle for tapers. However, the San Diego Zoo participates in taper breeding programs and supports the taper specialty group, which is made up of biologists, researchers, and zoo professionals. They work with people in countries where tapers live, helping find ways to conserve tapers and habitat. The jaguars that prowled 12,000 years ago were about 20% larger than today's cats. They had longer legs. This adaptation could be from stalking prey animals in open plains instead of pouncing on them from trees. Current day jaguars are the largest wild cats in the Americas, smaller than tigers and lions. They are at ease in the water and are good swimmers, often catching fish. Nearby, we learn about the California state fossil, the saber-toothed cat. This extinct predator used its seven-inch long canine teeth to slash its prey's throat. Once called saber-toothed tigers because they were thought to have stripes, it is now believed that they had spots instead. Next up is the African lion, representing the extinct American lion. American lions are about 25% bigger than today's African lion. It is thought that they may have hunted alone, not in groups like modern lions. 
Across from the lions, we get one final view of the elephants, and nearby a statue of a ground sloth tells us about the four kinds of ground sloths that roam North America, of which three species lived in Southern California. Here we find the Dictic, whose small size lets them hide from predators by disappearing into thickets. Their name is an imitation of the alarm call these tiny antelope make. Similar species that existed in California was a dwarf proghorn. This area takes us into a tar pit where we find out about the famous La Brea tar pits located in Los Angeles, California. Since 1906, more than a million bones have been recovered from these pits. We will also see some photographs of fossil digs in inland valleys and deserts in Southern California, as well as learn a few things about the local natural history museums. And this will conclude our trek through the elephant odyssey at the San Diego Zoo. Thanks for joining me. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.